Greetings, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. Today is Wednesday, the 15th of April, 2020. When I woke up this morning, the Lord gave me a real sense of all his various names and include the names Jesus called his father. Gardener, Potter. My father is the gardener, Jesus said. The, and we, we know about the cultivated olive tree. We know about God, the gardener, breaking branches off wild olive trees, the denominations, which are rooted in this world. And he sees good branches, does God the gardener, and he chooses those branches to break them off. They're already believers. They're already saved in the sense of they've given their lives to Christ, but they are rooted in the denomination. So it's a bit like graduation. When you leave the Bible college, uh, you leave uh, that environment and you are then off into the world as a minister in the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, most Bible colleges, most, not all, most are denominational. So when you are trained in the Bible college, you come out as a denominational minister and you are perpetuating that denomination. But the Lord says to you that if you submit, if you allow God to break you out of the denomination, he will graft you in to the root and God is the root, he'll graft you in to Christ. The root of the vine is Christ. So there are wild vines producing fruit, but the fruit has, uh, has a tainting of the world in it. Why? Because the wild vines are rooted in the world, in the kingdom of this world. And every denomination that has grown up over the centuries is a worldly thing. Why? Because it is a registered company, it's a registered charity, and it's subject to the laws of this world. But Christ is not of this world. So the vine of Christ, the root of Christ, God, he is the root of the cultivated vine and the cultivated olive tree. Now you can read that for yourselves, uh, John 15, the vine, Romans 11, the cultivated olive tree. And God is the gardener. And of course, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Jesus is with the Father, the resurrected Jesus is with the Father. So this is the nature of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And God is building his church. And the root of the church, the body of Christ, is one body of the one Christ throughout this world. This is why for the last many years I've been calling you brethren, that's plural for brothers and sisters, brethren of the one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the body of the one Christ, Jesus Christ, the incarnate God who came, who was born, of a virgin, he grew up, he knew at 12 years old who he was, about his father's business. 30 years old, thereabouts, he began his ministry, Isaiah 61. And then we know he went into Jerusalem on the donkey as prophesied, for the new king was come, Hosanna, son of David. But Jesus wasn't the son of David, he was the son of God. Joseph was the son of David, and of course, Joseph didn't have any direct influence on the birth of Jesus Christ. Mary was a virgin. Joseph was the stepfather. But Jesus wasn't the son of Joseph. He was the son of God. So Jesus, king of Israel, the shepherd of Israel, the teacher of Israel, the pastor of Israel, in fact, the God of Israel. If you receive Christ, you receive the Father. And the only way to the Father, God in heaven, is through Christ. John 14, verse six. 
Jesus said of himself that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. The Spirit of Christ is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And if Christ is in us, the Father, God, is in us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is in each one of us, born again, Holy Spirit, brethren of the one God, his one church, throughout this world. We are of the virgin bride church, the remnant church, the remnant few. So going back to God the gardener, it's God who chooses the good branches and he grafts us in to Christ the vine, the root of the vine, Christ. He grafts the branch into the root and God grafts good branches into the cultivated olive tree, Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, male and female. He grafts us all in to the cultivated olive tree, which itself is not of this world because it's cultivated. So the kingdom of God is not of this world. So where is the cultivated olive tree? It's in the kingdom of God. And the root is growing out of the rock of salvation. And what is in the rock water, the living water of Jesus Christ, supernatural, living, fresh water that the, comes up the roots, through the stump, into the branches. Now God has decided to end 2019 Christianity. So what is going to be in its place? Well, there's no it about the church. The church is not an it. The church is not a system. The church is not a company. The church is not a charity. The church isn't registered according to the world's laws of registration. Christ's church, and we're talking about people, we are rooted in Christ. We are rooted in God. We're not of this world anymore, brethren of the one God. The blood of Jesus Christ has dealt with every sin that is known to man. And those of us who are committed to Christ 100%, we submit to God, we submit to the Holy Spirit 100%. Jesus Christ is making us perfect. Why? Because Christ is perfect. God is perfect. The Holy Spirit is perfect. We are perfected, and that is the perfection God seeks in us. Are we willing to submit 100% to his Son, to the Holy Spirit, ultimately to the Father's will? Well, yes, Lord, I am. Now, what about all of you, brethren, of the one God? In principle, you say yes and amen, but your minds cannot comprehend what God is saying because we are finite. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to have 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 access to your mind, he will separate you continually from your past because God has been saying to say for weeks now, Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. Luke 9, verse 62. The past does not exist. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Tomorrow hasn't come. We are living in the today. Today is the day of salvation. No one's promised tomorrow. Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. We are living in this one day, the day of salvation, with God, in God, for God. And it's his spirit who works in us and through us. It is no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me and through me. And that's to God's glory. Now the glory of God is God's glory. The glory of God is his. God's been showing me, Haggai 2, that the temple, the rebuilding of the temple to contain God's glory is every individual, born again, Holy Spirit filled, believer in Christ. Each one of us is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now we've known that for decades. We've known that for decades. 
Each one of us, born of God, is no longer we who live, it's Christ who lives in us and through us. We've known that for decades. The temple of the Holy Spirit is each individual disciple, ambassador, servant in Christ. In Christ, of Christ. In the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit. In the way of Christ, in the way of the Holy Spirit. We are separated people. The blood of Jesus has separated us from every sin of the past. Everything is forgiven. Everything is under the blood of Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it is finished. And the finished work of Christ means exactly that, the finished work of Christ. And it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. And that's true for every single one of you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world, the remnant few that God has kept for himself. God is the gardener looking for good branches. God is the potter looking for good clay. God is the king looking for subjects to his will. God is the Father. God's will will be done. God is the gardener. It's not for the branch to say, pick me, pick me, pick me. God chooses whom he chooses. Even the branch, the good branch bearing good fruit, has been cut back. Everything has been cut back. The cutbacks the world has faced in financial terms God's closed the churches. If God has said to all the denominational leaders, including the Catholics, including the Anglicans, and all the major denominations, including all the new denominations, including all the ministries, if God has said, sent a memo around to every church leader and said, right, from the 29th of March, 2020, in the UK, I want you to shut all the church buildings. Nobody would have accepted it. But the irony is, the world has forced the churches to close their buildings. All around the world, the governments have said to the churches, you cannot open, not for your usual services. And all the churches have caved in. There's no longer meetings of groups of people in the church buildings, because the government said, but doesn't that show you something, that the church government was subject to the government of the countries? That as soon as the government said the buildings have to be closed, there was no protest, there was no argument, no discussion. It was yes, Lord, to the government, as if the government have power to, to shut the buildings. Well, the buildings are shut. They are closed down. But God has got our attention. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. It cannot be clearer. When the fires burned in Australia, there was no rain, even though people prayed. And even so-called Christians got together with the Muslims to get on their face, to face Mecca and to pray to their God, even so-called Christians. And still there was no rain and the fires burned and burned and burned. And then what happened next? Locusts in Africa. Swarms of locusts came into Africa. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 13. Read it for yourself. When I shut up the heavens, when I send a plague of locusts, and what's next? Read it for yourself. 2 Chronicles 7, 13. Pestilence. The pest of the virus has gone round the world. And, and this plague of the virus has, has forced governments to be terrified and to try to control this thing by their means that they've adopted. And they've closed down every business. All the outlets for all the addictions, plural, are closed. Drink, alcohol, gambling, nightclubs, carousing, restaurants, eating and drinking, fast food restaurants, fast food addiction to salts and sugars and fats, they're all closed. Food halls are being kept open. Supermarkets are kept open. Because you cannot live without food. Food and water. 
even the clothes shops in this UK are closed because countries full of uh, the wardrobes of, of every individual more or less is full of clothes some too many clothes and clothes was an addiction Shopahol shopaholics shopaholism was an addiction cafes are closed caffeine was an addiction and, and food and the ambiance of sitting in cafes was an addiction pubs are closed same thing not even just about the alcohol sitting amongst the world is an addiction and God in his wonderful way has brought about his will because the church won't listen to God he's used the world to force the church to shut their buildings but the church doesn't have to shut the building the church can disobey the government and still keep the buildings going for socially distanced services but the churches have accepted the laws of this country but Jesus has brought us right back to the understanding where two or three are gathered I am with you and I just uh, the Lord sent me to one of the church buildings today in Norwich UK and I sat in the car park a man came out and we knew each other by sight and then we got to know each other a bit more he and his wife are in the church building because they're taking care of the building they are the caretakers of the empty building but they're on the internet so they're not wasting their time they are fellowshipping with people around the world on the internet but the physical building is closed but where two or three are gathered God is with us so God is the potter looking for good clay and who are we as the clay to tell God what to do with his hands on our life are we the pot Jeremiah 18 are we the pot to tell the potter he's not doing it right I'm sorry mr. Potter we treat God as if he's our servant and servant king he is but not the way we think God's not our rubber stamp I don't like the way you've made me Lord could you do something better God is looking for humble servants not false humility true humility when the king tells you to do something he requires you to say yes Lord yes O King we are servants of Christ in Christ in the Holy Spirit to do the bidding of Christ the King it's Christ who reigns in me and through me I'm not anybody's King I'm not your King we have to distinguish between God's voice and our own voice the gift of the Holy Spirit he is given and he gives us prophecy and eagerly desire the gifts of prophecy and every other spiritual gift but the gift of prophecy first testing spirits discerning spirits distinguishing spirits it begins with you in yourself to know your thoughts and which thoughts are your thoughts and which thoughts come from God and of course which thoughts come from the enemy the enemy can put a, a thought into any one of our minds like Peter who do you say who do people say I am Jesus said to Peter you are the Christ the son of the living God you have the words of eternal life where else can we go and Jesus said to Peter my father gave that to you Peter that knowledge came from my father now it's my time to go to Jerusalem and die and Peter in the next breath said you shall not go to Jerusalem and Jesus said get behind me Satan because the words that came out of Peter's mouth they were from the devil trying to thwart the will of God the Father in the Son and by the Holy Spirit and Jesus said to the devil get behind me Satan and then he set his face like a flint towards Jerusalem to face the ultimate sacrifice of his life and then Peter said to the others let's go and die with him let's go and submit let's go on this journey to Jerusalem and die with him 
Now, that's a whole different subject there. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father, thank you, Jesus, the only begotten Son. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for who you are. You are leading us on the path of righteousness. And, and Lord, you brought the church right back to the stump of the cultivated olive tree. And one branch grows out of the stump is the righteous branch of Christ, Father, your only begotten Son. Christ Jesus, King of kings, Lords, uh, Lord of lords, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Lamb who was slain, the blood who was shed for us is upon us, brethren of the one God. We cannot be grafted into God unless it's by the blood of Christ. We must submit to Jesus Christ and his blood. And only the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and keeps us pure. But we are to remain in Jesus Christ and under the blood of Christ. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, 1 John 3, Romans 6, 2 Peter 2, 20 to 22. This is about not sinning. This is about not deliberately doing something you know to be wrong. The sin of commission and even the sin of omission. When God tells you to do something and you omit to do it, God has a way of telling you. And repentance and getting right with one another, Ephesians 4 and 5, there's one church, submit to one to another out of reverence of Christ. And where does submission begin? At the home, husbands and wives. Again, God has brought the husbands and wives back into one place called the home. The body of Christ of two is the husband and wife. Cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Foundation, Jesus Christ. Capstone, Jesus Christ. The door to the marriage is Jesus Christ. No one can come into uh, fellowship with another married couple except through Christ. There's no unfaithfulness in the body of Christ. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Spirit. Man is cleaved to his wife. One wife, one woman, one man. One man is the husband, one woman is the wife. It's all there in the scriptures. Man is destined to be born once, die and face judgment. No one's promised tomorrow. Don't let the sun go down on your anger today because if you don't wake up tomorrow, you've died in the sin of anger against whosoever. Don't be angry with your brother. Resolve to be right with your brother. Settle out of court because the judge is coming. And on the day of judgment, there is no mitigation. You're either innocent before God by the blood of the Lamb or you're guilty. And it's no good you saying, Lord, Lord, I did it for you. I did it for you. I did it for you. If you do anything, even in God's name, out of God's will, it, it, it is sin. Everything of faith is worship. Obedience is worship. Everything not of faith is sin. Now, if you don't think or feel I'm right, it's because there's a deception in your heart and in your mind. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. And the Spirit of Christ dwells in me to speak through my mouth to you the truth of Scripture in the Holy Spirit, in, in a word in season, a word for now. Now is the time for salvation. Today is the day of, of salvation. Now is the time for salvation. And today is the day of salvation. And God says, if, today, if you hear my voice, do not harden your heart or you will never enter my rest. Never means never. So don't harden your heart. If you are hard and stubborn and stiff-necked and you are against what I'm saying right now, you need to read Ezekiel 2 and 3. And you need to read on to the, about the shepherds and the false shepherds. And you need to read about the dry bones, the valley of the dry bones. 
Can these bones live? Sovereign Lord, you know, only you know. And you need to understand the breath in your body, the body of Christ, the temple of the Holy Spirit, your personal temple, each one of you, the breath in your body is the Holy Spirit. Yes, we breathe, breathe in the oxygen of this world. But if God withdrew his Holy Spirit from you, your life becomes empty, meaningless. It becomes Ichabod, each one of us. We plead, God, please do not withdraw your spirit from me. Do not take your life from me. And God comes back and says, well, submit to the Holy Spirit. Submit to one another. Submit to the Word of God. Submit to the Holy Spirit breathed scriptures. Come out of all your cults and your sects and your false denominations. Come out of Mormonism. Come out of your Jehovah's Witnessism. Come out of all the uh, the moves of God that have become things of man, man's ivory towers, man's great m milking machines to milk the sheep, to get fat off the sheep. God is against all the false shepherds who've become rich, fat, famous, because they've used the gifts, the talents, and exploited people to make things for themselves. Isaiah 6, chapter 6 to chapter 10, Isaiah. Read about the stump. We are in the stump, the remnant few that God has kept for himself. And from this day forward, the righteous branch, there is only one righteous branch, that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the King above all kings, the Lord above all lords. This is not a time for chief priests to go back to rebuilding their temple the way they used to have it, the hierarchy, the senior chief, Lord priest most high. This is not the time for them to reinvent their form of Christianity, to get the money to come back in, the revenue stream to come back in. This is not the time uh, for God's people uh, who are called by his name to be proud of how they used to be. This is a time for humility. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. Read it. Get right with, with God today. No man is promised tomorrow, no one. Man is destined to be born once, die and face judgment. Don't make an assumption you're gonna live forever on earth. Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So brethren, we'll pray for one another. I know there are those of you out there hearing this, the same truth, and you've been hearing it for many years, decades. You've been waiting for this time to come. God has taken his sheep back to himself. The Lord is my shepherd. The teacher who dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, he is the same as Christ, and the Christ is the same as the Father. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. We'll speak again in the will of God, by the will of God. The grace of God and the mercy of God be upon you. Every blessing in Christ. God bless you.